in the last lecture, we had introduced the Chinese remaindering theorem. Let me review quickly. What we have is n positive integers, which are pairwise coprime, which means that their g, uh, greatest common divisor is 1 for every pair. And let p be the product of these integers. Then, the, the remaindering theorem says that there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between all the integers between z, from 0 to p minus 1 and such n tuples, where each integer is between 0 and uh, or ith integer is between 0 and p i minus 1. And the correspondence is that for each u, there is a unique tuple n tuple, where the ith element of this tuple is the remainder of u on division by p i. We also showed that the converse, so computing, we, we had shown how to compute, efficiently compute this n tuple from the given integer u. And then towards computing the converse, suppose we are given an n tuple belonging to this set. Then we show that this quantity is equal to u, where uh, the remainder of u with respect to p i is this u i. And over here, c i was nothing but p by p i, which is same as q k 0 divided by p i, which is the product of all the uh, integers other than p i and d i was supposed to be in the range 0 to p i minus 1, such that c i d i mod t i is 1. In other words, under this modulo computation, d i is the inverse of c i. Given this, we had shown that this is what u is. And we also argued that always such a d i exists, uh, simply because all these are mutually co prime. And we showed quickly, uh, let me re recap, uh, that p i and c i are also co prime. And from that, since every G C D can be expressed as some alpha times P i plus beta times C i equal to G C D of P i C i. That is to say, there exists some alpha and beta such that this combination is the G C D, which is 1. Now, if we compute modulo p of both sides, we get um, alpha times modulo p i, which is 0. And hence, we can ignore this. We are getting beta times c i modulo p i is 1. So, this was our d i. Okay. So, for now, I am going to assume that d i's are pre-computed. Remember, if you are going to perform such computations computations repeatedly, you have pre-computed such d i. And now, let us take a look at uh, computation of u from given u i. So, the problem is to compute u for given tuple u 0 to u n minus 1. Now, if you look at this sum, you notice that this could be broken as uh, c i d i u i, i going from 0 to n minus 1. I can split this 
this is all the p i s multiplied except uh, p j is multiplied except p i. So, I am going to split this sum into middle uh, at middle and, and we will have i going from 0 to n by 2 minus 1. In all these cases, the c i will have p n by 2 in this factor, p n by 2 plus 1 will be present in this factor, all those will be common. So, I am going to take that out and I can express that as q uh, k minus 1 1 and this part will be now uh, q uh, k minus 1 0 divided by p i d i u i okay. and this side will look like q k minus 1 0 and sum will go from i equal to n by 2 to n minus 1 q k minus 1 1 over p i d i u i. Notice that uh, if you multiply this into this, you will get precisely q k 0 and this is being divided by p i, but all these p i's in this part do not occur in this, they all occur in this side. So, I can actually separate this out. Similarly, these p i's occur in q k minus 1 1. So, I can separate this portion out. Similarly, I can go on breaking these sums. This time, if I want to break this sum, I can split this as sum uh, q k minus 2 uh, 1 sum q k minus 2 0 over p i d i u i and this side will be q k minus 2 0 q k minus 2 1 by p i d i u i. This side that splits to as q k minus 2 3 sum q k minus 2 2 over p i d i u i and the other term will look like q k minus k minus 2 uh, 2 and this will my i here will go from uh, n by 2 2 n by 2 plus n by 4 here it will go minus 1 and this will go from n by 2 plus n by 4 to n minus 1 q k minus 2 uh, 3 over p i u i d i. Now, I can keep on reducing this. So, what I notice is I could define, let me define a notion uh, a, 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 a sum as S j i as uh, q j i over uh, p m d m u m and m goes 
from i to i plus 2 power j minus 1. If we define this, then our desired u is nothing but s k 0. This is what we want to compute. Now, I need to write a recurrence relation. Sorry. So, we have been always using the second index as the index in the array. So, I should put this as uh, n by 2, yeah, which is n by 2, this is fine and this will be n by 2 and 0. This should be n by 2 plus n by 4 and over here, we will write n by 2 minus 1. Yes, uh, this is only up to n by Yes, this is n by 4 and this is fine. So, that is right. And so, now let us try to write the recurrence relation among S's. So, what we can do is notice that this S j i j i can be broken into uh, parts of half size, just the way we have broken here, we will get q uh, j i plus 2 power j minus 1, j minus 1 s, sorry, this will be j minus 1, 2, we need some more space, s uh, j i is uh, q j minus 1 i uh, plus 2 power j minus 1 s j minus 1 i plus and here we will have q j minus 1 i s j minus 1 i plus 2 power j minus 1. We have this recurrence, which is exactly what I have shown here. So, now this gives us a way to start from the bottom and build our way up. So, I need to also give you the, the base cases and that is 0 i and this is nothing, but there is only one term in these sums. That product is just p m and m divides it. So, this is gone and all you get is d i u i for all i. Now, we have the base cases, we have the recurrence and our goal is to compute this. So, our algorithm will begin with assigning these values as this and then each iteration will give us a higher level s and finally, we will output the top level namely s k naught. So, let us start with for i from 0 to n minus 1, we have as uh, uh, 0 i equal to uh, d i u i. Uh, remember that I assume that d i's are known to us upright. Then for j going from 1 to k, and for uh, i going from 0 to n minus 2 power j in steps of 2 power j. 
and now I have to just uh, rewrite that re recurrence s of j i is a q uh, j minus 1 i plus 2 power j minus 1 j minus 1 i plus q j minus 1 j minus 1 i s j minus 1 i plus 2 power j minus 1 and return uh, s k 0. This is our desired u. Now, the time complexity is assume again, we will assume that each uh, of the uh, integer p i, uh, suppose the size in terms of bits of each of the p i is less than equal to b, then the value of uh, in terms of uh, size of all the j minus 1 is less than equal to 2 power j minus 1 into b and uh, we have to compute uh, s j i and if the size of these numbers is initially of course, what we have to do is uh, compute uh, d i into u i. Each of these u i's is at most b, b bits, because this is the remainder of u divided by uh, p i. So, this is b bits, this is b bits, because this is the remainder again. So, these are um, say, tw uh, these are say, uh, 2 bit 2 b in size and if the size of this is uh, 2 power uh, j times b, if the size of this is 2 power j times b, this is 2 power j minus 1 times b. Okay. So, we have um, this plus this. Um, let me see if this is actually um, b and b. So, this should add up to 2 power less than or equal to power j plus 1 b bits the reason is this plus this sum together will be at most to power j plus 1 times b bits. So, what we can claim is that the size of s j minus 1 star is less than or equal to 2 power j times b bits. And we are performing a multiplication here of two multiplications here. So, the time at level j for computing one of these terms, we are going to perform two of these multiplications of size 2 power j b that is to say each number is less than or equal to 2 power j b bits. And there are uh, n divided by 2 power j uh, steps in this. So, we are going to perform that many uh, sums 
that many multiplications and that many sums, which is less than equal to 2 times m n times b once again using the fact that uh, uh, m is at least linear. So, if I multiply this factor inside that should cost at least this much if not more. Now, this is the cost of one stage. So, I will say that the total cost the total cost uh, is this much for each of the stages of j, which are as many as k. So, k times 2 times k times m n b, which is k is the log of n. So, the cost is order uh, m n b times log of n. So, this is the same time complexity as that of computing the forward representation, the n tuple representation from given u. Now, these ideas that we have introduced for integers and the algorithms that we have given, today I am going to show can be directly adopted for the polynomials. So, now let us talk about Chinese remainder theorem for polynomials. Now, what we will do is first we will give some background about polynomials, which justifies why these ideas can be directly lifted for them. And then later on we will come back to these uh, algorithms. And then finally, I will introduce a special instance of p i s, which is of great interest. So, let us first of all introduce certain notations and some concepts uh, this denotes the set of all polynomials on a single variable x this set is a is something called a ring and more than that actually it is a special kind of ring which is known as a unique unique factorization domain so i'm going to describe what that is but this is unique factorization domain it satisfies here r stands for real numbers which means the coefficients of the polynomials that we are representing here come from this field, it is a field of real numbers and the variable is x. So, for example, uh, 3.2 x square minus 8 is a member of this, uh, this ring or u f t. Now, the properties that this satisfies are the following. One, that R x is an abelian group under summation, which means if you add two polynomials, you get back a polynomial. You add f plus g or you compute g plus f, you get the same thing. So, it is commutative and that makes it abelian. For any um, polynomial f, there is a polynomial minus f such that f plus minus f is 0. There is a 0 in it, which when added to any member gives that member back. That is known as identity of the group. 
minus f is the inverse of f, f is the inverse of minus f. Uh, the second property is that we have multiplication operation, which I am going to denote by star or sometimes you may write as dot. This operation distributes over sum. So, let me make sure I am, uh, this operation distributes over this operation, which means f times g plus h is f times g plus f times h. 3 star is uh, associative, is associative and commutative. This says that f times g times h is equal to f times g times h and this one is saying f times g is g times f. They are equal. The fourth property is that 1 in this is a different entity than 0. And something, th th these are the properties of a ring with a unity. And that becomes a domain, if you have the following property. The fifth property says, it has no 0 divisor. What does that mean? This says that if you have two elements f and g in this and both of them are non-zero, then their product cannot be 0. That is to say their product is also non-zero. Now, these properties makes this a domain. Unique factorization, this part of the uh, characterization of uh, this set says that every polynomial f in R x can be factored, which means can be expressed as product as in a unique way, where each of these polynomials is not factorizable or uh, irreducible. But with a pinch of salt, when we say that this is unique, what we are saying is that q or 10 q or q divided by 10, these are the same. We do not differentiate between these, because they differ by only a constant, a member of the real field r, the real number field r. If I do not differentiate between these, then I cannot factorize f in any other way. And the only way I can factor q 1 for that matter is equal to maybe 10 times q 1 by 10. That is not much of a difference. So, we will say that this is not a factorization of any sort. Y yes, for example, now I can say f could be written as, see f has only two factors q 1, q 2. This could also be 10 q 1 times q 2 by 10, but this is not different from this for us. So, as long as you understand that we do not consider a constant multiple as any different from the original polynomial, then this is unique. Now, recall that in case of integers, natural numbers, every natural number can be factorized uniquely in terms of some primes. So, for example, uh, we can write uh, 30 as 
2 into 3 into 5. Now, this is unique and these are not further factorizable and they are also known as primes. In the same fashion, these are irreducible polynomials into which every polynomial can be factorized. If f was itself uh, a, an irreducible polynomial, then this it would be its own factor, unique factor. This property is captured by calling it unique factorization domain. Now, let us talk about few other useful properties we will need. So, the division algorithm which says that given f and g in r x, f and g are two polynomials. I will not bother writing down f of x and g of x, because it is just a bother. So, we will simplify it and simply call it f and g. Let us take two polynomials in r, then there exists a unique q and r also in this such that f can be expressed as g times q plus r and the degree of r is strictly less than the degree of g. What we are saying is that we can divide f by g, then this is the quotient and this is the remainder and when the remainder degree is less than the degree of the divisor, then we stop. And there is a simple polynomial time algorithm to compute this. All we have to do is, suppose we have for example, uh, 3 x cube minus 2 x square plus 4 g is let us say, um, well, 8 x minus 9 then I am going to multiply this by suitable monomial or term, so that the biggest term matches with this. So, I am going to multiply g by 3 over 8 x square to get 3 x cube minus 27 by 8 x square. Now, if I divide subtract this from this, I am going to get uh, I will go I will get this minus this is uh, 27 by 8 minus 2 x square plus 4. Now, I will repeat this process this we can simplify, we are going to get uh, 11 by 8, 11 by 8 into x square. I am going to multiply this by 11 by uh, 64 into x, 11 by 64 into x and then subtract, keep doing it. When the degree that is the uh, exponent of the largest term is less than the exponent of largest term. In this case, it is 1. So, it should become a constant. Then we have to start. So, the division algorithm allows me to express every polynomial in this fashion for given g. The next uh, thing is the computation of g c d and the existence of g c d rather. So, suppose we have f and g, f and g are from r x, then there is a greatest common divisor of these two polynomials, which is a polynomial also in this. And by definition, that means that that divides both f and g and anything else that divides both, this polynomial divides that. So, if h divides f and g, then this polynomial will divide h. 
we will not bother to prove this, but I can just point out the existence of this is easy to see, because if I compute the factors of f and g, suppose I break the factors q 1, q 2 and the factors of this q 1 prime, q 2 prime and notice that they may differ. I may say q 1 is equal to q 1 prime, if they differ by a constant. So, constant can be set aside and then if we find out all the common factors between them and if I collect them and multiply together, this is this would be the G C D. It is easy to see that. So, the existence of G C D is easy to see in any unique factorization domain. Next, I am going to show how to compute it. So, in the meantime, I will just point it out that if h divides h divides f and h divides g, that would imply that h divides g c d. I think I made a mistake earlier. I said g c d divides h, but no, this is the greatest common divisor. Hence, h will divide this as well. Now, uh, the computation of the G C D that comes from a simple fact, which is identical the Euclidean algorithm, which is applicable in uh, uh, integers ap applies here as well. That is to say that G C D of f comma g, where the degree of h f is greater than equal to degree of g. If this is the case, then the this is also equal to the G C D of the remainder of f divided by g comma g. Notice that we earlier showed f can be written as q g plus r. So, this is g c d of r comma g. Now, anything that divides both of them, that will divide the right hand side of this expression, because it divides r and g. Hence, it will have to divide f. Now, anything that divides both of these, that would mean it divides f as well as g and r can be written as f minus q g. Hence, it divides r. So, now notice that the degree of this is less than that of g. So, I can iteratively go down and finally, I will have one of these terms as 0 and g c d of r comma 0 is r, because r divides r, r divides 0. So, the g c d computation uh, g c d of uh, uh, p 1 and p 2 is if degree of p 1 is greater than degree of p 2, then exchange p 1 and p 2. So, I assume degree of p 1 is less than equal to degree of p 2, then I will compute uh, p 1 prime as the remainder of p 2 divided by p 1. I will define now p, uh, p 2 as p 1 and p 1 as p 1 prime. Once again, the degree of this is greater than or equal to degree of this and then return the G C D of uh, P 1 comma P 2 and the terminating condition is that if uh, okay, if here, here I am going to say if uh, P 1 is 0, then return P 2. 
the terminating condition would come here. We know that degree of p 2 is greater than or equal to degree of p 1. In case p 1 is 0, then you return p 2, else you proceed with this. Now, this is exactly what we do in the uh, case of integers. And hence, we also have one interesting property that is G C D of P 1 and P 2 can be expressed as some H 1 times P 1 plus H 2 times P 2. That is simple, because in the base case G C D of r comma 0 is r. So, the G C D is expressed as 1 times r that is done. And then if you can express this as linear combination of r and g, which means that you multiply a polynomial here and multiply a polynomial here and their sum turns out to be G C D, then I can replace r by f minus q g and I will get a linear combination in terms of f and g. So, I will get my g c d of f and g in terms of combination of f and g. So, this is a very useful result. This tells me that, so observe that, that uh, p 1 and p 2 are co prime if and okay, this one I should say for some h 1 and h 2. Okay. And this says they are co prime, remember co prime means the G C D is 1. So, this is if and only if there exist h 1, h 1 and h 2 in R z, R x such that h 1 p 1 plus h 2 p 2 is 1. If you can combine them to get 1, that means they are co prime. A few things about modulo uh, computation. So, a few observations, which says that 1, that uh, A modulo p this is we have seen in the case of integers a modulo p times q modulo p. Similarly, uh, a times b times c modulo p is equal to a times b mod p times c mod p. So, these are very simple um, statements, easy to verify. Uh, then, we have another observation. It says P1 and P2 are co prime. Suppose P1 and P2 are in Rx are co prime. If there exists U in Rx such that P 1 divides u. Notice that when you divide u by P 1 and the remainder is 0, we say P 1 divides u. Similarly, if P 2 divides u, then P 1 times P 2 divides u. Again, if you recall, if you go back to the uh, fact that there is a unique factorization for uh, p 1, p 2 and u, 
then these, uh, this is the, the factors of P 1 are all present in this with the same with the greater than equal to the multiplicity of this. So, suppose I have got q 1 here, q 1 power 2 here, then we have q 1 power 2 or more here and so on. The factors of this are also present in this, but the factors of p 1 and factors of p 2 share nothing, because they are co prime. Hence, both the combined factors of p 1 and p 2 must also be present in this. Hence, the product multi, uh, divides the entire u. And the corollary of this statement is that, if we have a p 1, p 2 or I would say p 0, p 1, p 2 to p n minus 1 are all pairwise co prime polynomials and p i divides u for all i, just extending the same result, we can say then p which is the product p i divides u, the entire product will divide u. And now, we are going to state the Chinese remaindering theorem in this case. And this statement is exactly the same. The theorem says, let p 0, p 1, p n minus 1 belonging to R x be all be pairwise co prime and p be the product of these i's 0 to n minus 1. Now, we will again we have a set two sets here and we are going to establish a correspondence between them. So, those two sets are the following. Here, we have set of then there exists a 1 to 1 correspondence between the set here is all the polynomials u in R x where the degree of u is less than the degree of p. Earlier, we had integers and the integers were ranging from 0 to p minus 1. Here, we are talking about similar thing, but in terms of the degree. The degree of these is up to uh, 1 less than the degree of this and the set on the other side is a tuple uh, u 0 through u p uh, sorry n minus 1, where each u i is a member of R x and u i is the remainder of u divided by p i. And notice that the remainder has a degree strictly less than that of the divisor. So, you do not need to say this here, we are simply saying the set. So, I will say that the degree of u i is strictly less than the degree of p i. Now, this defines a set of n tuples of polynomials, where the ith polynomial has degree less than the degree of p i. Now, these two sets have one to one correspondence. 
such that u in this set maps to uh, u modulo p0 u modulo p1 to this triple these have degree less than the corresponding p i this has degree less than p0 this has degree less than p1 so this tuple falls in this set this belongs to this set that is to say the degree of u is given to be less than degree of p so the the similarity is there the only difference is that we will be looking at the degree otherwise there is a identical correspondence here once again we can compute uh, this tuple this tuple from this polynomial and this polynomial from this tuple of polynomials in the identical way that we have computed in the integer scale so i will go through that in the next lecture and then we will consider a special case of pi's and we'll see some surprising consequences of this correspondence and these algorithms which are very useful in the next class okay